Hello, friends. I'm hoping that we can answer three very important questions this evening. Oop. And they are, what is a water slide? Where do they come from? And what is the closest one to here? So starting at the beginning of my list of questions, what is a water slide? A water slide is essentially the application of physics to fun. Basically using the, the principles of, of kinetic motion that an object in motion will stay in motion to propel you downhill using the application of water in the reduction of friction so you go faster. We're getting there. So there's a high probability that humanity has been using water to reduce friction in a variety of ways <laughs> for a substantial amount of time, um, even in the context of the reduction of friction to go faster downhill. We have historically built structures like aqueducts and log flumes that seem like they'd be fun to also ride around in as a human. And we have applied this principle to natural phenomenon also, sometimes to our own detriment. Some of you may remember Matthew Webb and his sexy swimsuits. From earlier this year, Matthew Webb unfortunately lost his life attempting to swim over Niagara Falls. But in the late 1800s, despite any fun we might have been having in nature or in structures we were theoretically using for other purposes prior to this, in the late 1800s, we as a species got really serious about using physics for fun and water for friction reduction. <laughs> and we started to develop more serious rides around this. So the amusement really came into play. This is the chute. It was a ride at Coney Island that was built in 1895. And you basically rode it up in, in a little metal car and rode down it in a little wooden boat. And I'm not gonna keep you hanging on this to like try and picture that because we actually have video of how this worked. Um, so don't distract yourself on the top part of this video. There's some really cool mechanical stuff, but the good part is actually coming down the side here um, where you will see them shooting the shoot. So the principle of this was basically a bunch of fully dressed Victorians would go up this m mechanical cart and then ride down and splash into the water. Um, and this was actually incredibly popular. It was incredibly popular in Coney Island. It was incredibly popular in Earl's Court. This is a postcard from 1903 of the shoot at Earl's Court. Um, the shoot at Earl's Court inspired a number of other shoots in the London area that were personal. They were designed for swimmers and divers and they were designed for the individual. And so if you look at the set of rules for using an individual shoot in the late 1890s in London, this may seem familiar. And the, at first I was reading these and I was like, ooh, two people in the shoot, that doesn't sound very safe. And then I was like, wait, this is Victorian England where we thought that children should work in mines. So yeah, that, that seems reasonable. Um, but, but other than that, like one thing that, that sends safety monitor Barbara into a little bit of like an uncomfortable shiver, this, this sounds pretty familiar. Although I, I question the ropes. Shoots were really a worldwide phenomenon. This was the um, shoot in Wonderland in the New Zealand International Ex Exhibition in 1906. The Wonderland portion of the International Exhibition was wildly popular and the newspapers were writing a lot of complaints about this because in the context of the International Exhibition, it was considered to be fairly non-educational and just for fun, so uh, attendance went through the roof. And this was a similar product to the other shoots that we've explored in which you would go uphill in a little cart and then downhill in a little boat. And this was so popular that everyone was riding on this thing up to and including the governor of New Zealand who was Lord Plunkett at that time, causing the Canterbury Times to write, the gubernatorial countenance was one, was one vast substantial smile for be he Plunkett or Popper. There is no variation of the delight caused by that wonderful rush through space, that electric thrill when the boat smacks the water, and the exhilaration as she furrows bouncingly over the lake. 
the shoot at Wonderland was going at such speed that there was like a whole recovery boat system of boats out in the, the pond that you landed in to like find you and drag you back in. <laughs> but Plunkett went through it several times because apparently it was just a lot of fun. Back in the US in the 1920s, we started to see the development of the personal water slide for the single rider become more, more popular. Herbert Seller developed the water toboggan slide scene here where you rode down on a wooden sled. So you got your own wooden sled and you shot down the slide and you shot across the water. Herbert Seller is often credited with having invented the modern water slide and, and it's questionable based on some of the rides that we've seen before and some of the other things going on at the time. But I do want to give Herbert Seller his credit. Herbert Seller definitely invented the tilt-a-whirl. But in 1923, when his water toboggan slide was becoming popular, there was also a patent filed by Clyde E. Howard for an aquatic toboggan slide. So it seems like a bunch of people were having the same great idea at the same time. <laughs> Coming out of the 1920s, water slides really tended to live in one of two places. They were either those big attractions where you would try and put a lot of people in a boat that were happening as part of a larger amusement park, or they were these single rider things that were happening in places where swimming was happening. So you would see them at beaches or pools or other places where people were already engaged in water sports. Part of the reason that these, these were sort of limited in scope was due to the construction. They were generally built of wood, metal, or concrete. A lot of the personal level slides were built of concrete. And as we previously, yes, see, you, you know where I'm going with this, because as we previously discussed the idea of the application of water to reduce friction as being a critical component of the water slide, concrete was perhaps not the best medium for these. But water slides were still available to people, especially in the United States. And then in the 1970s, a couple of things changed that really started to make water slides be more of what we think about them. Some of it is science and some of it is, <laughs> some of it is science and some of it is capitalism. <laughs> this is George Millay. And as you might guess from this photo, George Millay was the founder of SeaWorld. That was more mixed than I was expecting. I'm going to be honest with you. George Millay was also the founder of Wet n Wild Orlando, which was the first modern style water park to open in the United States. This park opened in 1977 and it unfortunately closed in 2016, which was a generally bad year for water parks. I'm bummed that this one closed because I look at this picture and I want to go there. This park started to introduce a lot of the features that we would probably consider now to be the classic water park features. So you would see things like the wave pool, the lazy river, and those big skyscraper water slides that are like huge and you see them when you're driving down the road and you say, oh, can we pull off now? Can we just go to like stop at the water park real fast? George Millay invented a couple of these things and he stole a couple of these ideas from other parks. He would go to amusement parks to suss out their water rides because they normally only had one or two. And he would go to these beach parks where they would occasionally introduce a ride to go along with their swimming. And so he really started to build this concept of the water park. Part of the reason he could do this and part of the reason that those big skyscraper slides started to become a thing was a technological advancement and they started to build them out of fiberglass. So that water for reduction of friction thing started to work out a lot better. And because the slides were getting taller and faster, we started to get a more standardized set of rules, which probably look more, slightly more familiar than that set than we saw from London, including that one writer, which I appreciate personally. Um, there is a rule that you do not see on this list, though, that I like to think that we all hope people are following at the water park, which is to not pee in the pool. So an important fact for all of you to know, which you may regret knowing after this evening, if your pool smells strongly of chlorine, it is not actually chlorine you are smelling. It is chloramine. And chloramine is the chemical that is produced when the nitrogen in urine mixes with chlorine. And that is why your eyes turn red. And that is why the pool smells of chlorine. And that is why in 2016, a very bad year for water parks, a park in Ohio was discovered during a CDC investigation to be providing toxic levels of chloramine to its workers. So please do not pee in the pool at the water park. It is bad for people's health. Also in 2016, unfortunately, 
we learned the extent of the danger that water slides can present. And a 10-year-old boy was killed on this slide. This is the Verrucht water slide that was disassembled after that death. Um, because the slides were getting faster and taller, there was, there was some safety precautions that were perhaps not taken into full consideration. And so water slides can present themselves as being very dangerous. Despite the potential grossness and despite the potential danger, water slides and water parks continue to be very popular. They continue to be very popular, especially in the United States. In the United States, there are about 12,000 water parks. <laughs> Excuse me, that was a slight exaggeration. 1,200 water parks, which is still a lot, considering in the rest of the world there are about 700 total. So. This is, this is sort of a little bit of an American phenomenon. And to answer the question I asked previously about what the closest one to here is, I do believe that that would be the Aqua Adventure Fremont Water Park in Fremont, California, where you can see this delightful John Pugh mural, which some of you might remember from last year. This is a trompe l'oeil painting. This is a very beautiful example of the style. So in closing, four water parks. I have, I, I have, I have a prop. They may be kind of gross sometimes. They may, be, they may be a little dangerous. They may do absolutely nothing for your international expansion plans, so you're not going to take over Europe anytime soon. But I'm going to stick with my buddy here, and I'm going to say, I think they're pretty fun.